20 years ago in 2000, you published the Internet Guide for Diplomats. At the time, the first book of its kind. And in the book, you explain that the driving force was to assist diplomats using the internet in their daily work. And in the book, you combine technical aspects with specific use cases, and then also broader reflections on diplomacy and the internet. I think 20 years is a great time to look back and reflect. At the same time, a lot of things have changed in 20 years. I mean, just two things come to mind, mobile phones, smartphones, and social media. So I think, however, there's always continuity and change. So I think this is a good place to start. Looking back over the past 20 years, what points seem as relevant today as they have been 20 years ago? What do you think? Continuity and change is a dynamic of the, this evolution of uh, uh, diplomacy. And I would go even uh, further in history, maybe two centuries or uh, since the start of diplomacy when our far predecessors realized that it was better to negotiate than to kill each other. And uh, that is, uh, the last 20 years is uh, on this long, long journey. And then there is a continuity of the core function of diplomacy, of peaceful resolution of conflicts, promotion of national interests, uh, through embassies, through the network of missions. And there is definitely a change in the way how it is done. Now, one shouldn't overestimate this change. Uh, it, uh, we have new tools, but still there are old traditional diplomatic tools of negotiation, persuasion, personal mm -hmm. engagement. Yes, I, I, I would like to take a different stance from what Johan said, uh, looking back 20 years ago, in the sense that uh, I completely agree, of course, but, uh, but um, I, I, I would like to mention uh, why we decided to write this book 20 years ago. And uh, the, the, I think the drive um, was something which is not, dif not that different tomorrow, uh, today, which is uh, at that time we, we really perceived that in the diplomatic world, also in many other professional world, but we were very focused, like today, deeply focused on, on the diplomatic world. There was really a, a big need to understand what was going on in the profession, uh, in the uh, not only in the, in the in the pursuing the objectives of diplomats, but also in the daily work. What was the influence of the of the internet, of the new tools which were available? It was quite quite a revolution, I think. I don't want to overestimate, of course. But it changed quite a lot of habits, it changed quite a lot of priorities, uh, it changed quite a lot of skills needed. So our perception at that time, and I think it was correct, is that the uh, people, the diplomats, were not uh, ready uh, or were not uh, um, uh, you know, knowledgeable enough to make the best use of what, uh, what was available. So we wanted to give our contribution to this. And that's how the, the book came out. Absolutely. And I mean, just going through the book, it's, it's really interesting because on the one hand, it almost feels like an archaeological piece because there's so many things in there that seem archaic now, for example, how to set up a modem, um, things about different search engines. At the same time, it's a great reminder because there was one section where you described different internet search engines and for different purposes. And for me, that was just a realization that, you know, Google hasn't been around forever. You know, these are kind of new developments. At the same time, we're talking about skills that seem to be continuing, that we need to continuously learn. For example, in the book, you speak about um, ICT literacy skills for diplomats. And obviously the demands were different 20 years ago, but I think the need to develop these skills, for example, how to find information, how to critically evaluate information, how to deal with fake news, these kind of demands are as big, I would say, as they were 20 years ago. Obviously, the technology has changed, but the need for that kind of training and understanding is, is growing as the technology is growing. I was wondering if you were to guide diplomats today, what would you do differently? What would you emphasize differently? I think the principles didn't change. Uh, change the tools changed quite a lot. Mm -hmm. 
and there was a, a major change. Then we can go deeper in this in the um, in the let's say in the promotion, what we called at that time the promotion, which today I would say the digital marketing. That's completely different, mm -hmm. in the sense that you know the accent twenty years ago and the problem, the big problem, were the websites. You know, today it's something which is taken for granted. You know, you must have a website. But there is a very interesting um, a graph, uh, and I'm glad that we put some numbers at that time, where you can see the percentage of missions which had a website for different countries. You know, and there were very low percentages. The highest was at the time France with more than 50%, then was Italy with 30%. Mm -hmm. And then, so today it's nearly 100% with websites. So just, you have to know what was then to understand what, what's going on today, I think. That's, that's important. That's why it has still a value. That's why it's not a celebration of, you know, to uh, all the authors that uh, or for Diplo. Yes, Diplo has a meaning because it proves that there is a tradition and a knowledge which not doesn't come from today. It comes from when it all started, let's say, especially in, in, in IT. But it's also to know uh, where, where we come from to understand what, why we are today in a certain way and maybe to imagine what is going to be in, in, the, in the future. Over the last 20 years, one of the trends which was clear was uh, uh, sudden over-enthusiasm about latest technology. Uh, and the latest, uh, let's say, latest uh, importance of data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. And there was a, some sort of sleepwalking of the global profession, not only diplomacy, that data, more data, more information, will lead to more information, which will lead to more knowledge, and in turn to more wisdom. What we are realizing today is that uh, we have unprecedented uh, quantity of data available to all of us, information tools, but not necessarily uh, transferred into the wisdom of solving the problems, which is ultimately the aim of diplomacy. Therefore, one uh, lesson from the last 20 years is to use these uh, fantastic tools, but to be always aware of the core function of diplomacy and limits of technology. Technology is not going to provide us with wisdom. Wisdom is still a, a privilege of a human or lack of wisdom, which is unfortunately often prevailing. Therefore, that element is important because we tend to simply say, oh, this is the latest data science tool. Now, obviously, we, it will solve problems for us, including AI recently. Mm -hmm. But that's that's major lesson from for at least for me for, from the last twenty years. In addition, what Stefano mentioned. Definitely, I, I think so. Basically, the last twenty years provide a lesson that uh, technological optimism in itself is not is not going to save us, right? Yes, uh, that that's that's uh, that's true. But uh, it's normal. It's very human to be enthusiastic. We like new toys, uh, even when we are closer to retirement as uh, as uh, we are approaching it. But uh, uh, there is element that when that enthusiasm becomes business model, then it can misguide the whole uh, profession, whole community, uh, leading to the waste of funds and other and other issues. The famous Gartner curve shows this. Uh, uh, hyper optimism than disillusionment. But I think it's also a good reminder what you just said is a good reminder that it's really hard to predict the future. So being in the business of trying to predict the future is almost impossible. I, so, I, if I can, if, if I can intervene on the pred yeah. prediction of future, whatever we will have in the future in terms of um, available tools, they are one way or another related to what has been used and developed in the past. I mean, we had the mail, and then from the mail, uh, we went to the blogs, and then we went to, to Twitter. They are completely different things, but there are relations to, to this. In the sense, and here I come to the, the issue of skills, that if you don't develop in time uh, certain skills with certain tools, it will be more difficult for you to adapt to the new tools that will be developed. So it's a continuity. You cannot jump in 
Of course, this it's uh, it's less uh, let's say uh, less sensitive than it was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, it was a jump for many diplomats, for example, jump in. Now you have you know the the, the digital generation. You call it as you want. There are many definitions of these generations. Of course, they are they are, they are coming with their backlog of knowledge already but this doesn't mean that they know how to apply or how to make the best use of these tools in the profession uh, i do want to kind of ask is there anything that kind of surprised you in the past 20 years anything you think i wish or we wish we would have seen this um, 20 years ago to kind of put put in our uh, guide Anything, any developments that really changed things that you were, that you couldn't see in 2000 that are now so prominent? Johan, is there anything that comes to mind? Well, uh, for me, the most structural impact on diplomacy was the arrival of Wi-Fi technology into the conference rooms. Mm -hmm. That is completely under research. And unfortunately, academia focuses mainly on Twitter diplomacy, what is fancy lately, but arrival of simple Wi-Fi tool has changed diplomacy substantively for a few reasons. Uh, first, uh, half of the people attending the meetings uh, may be somewhere else uh, browsing the net or uh, booking the restaurant for the evening or doing some, uh, some personal things. I often do the test how many people are cognitively present in the room, although they sit in the physically in the room. Uh, a second, it provided a suddenly negotiators with direct access to the, their people back, back home. You don't need to go to the embassy or to mission to wait for cable giving you instruction, which has some many positive but also negative aspects. It also opened diplomacy to uh, more scrutiny, more transparency, more inclusion. And generally speaking, this was a positive development, but with some negative, negative aspects as well, especially uh, on the risk that people who are broadcasted uh, with Wi-Fi may speak more to their audience back home than to the, their interlocutor across the table. Therefore, that arrival of Wi-Fi in conference room and with Wi-Fi, obviously, Twitter, social media, and what uh, Wi-Fi enables is probably um, something that we couldn't predict in uh, 20 years ago, but it has made the more uh, structural and substantive impact on the way diplomacy is conducted. I would even argue more than Twitter and Facebook and social media. I, if I can uh, just uh, exchange for you an, an old uh, souvenir of Wi-Fi, which is good. Uh, I, I agree with, 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 with your one. Really, we could not imagine in 2000 uh, that the Wi-Fi was, you know, there to come and, and, and quite make many changes. But I can tell you that even every change that took place in the diplomatic activity, it was a, a hard one. It was not smooth. Even the Wi-Fi in the, in the assembly halls or in the meeting rooms was a big fight. And I personally remember this because I was in New York Uh, starting in 2002, and the first two years, of course, there was no Wi-Fi in the rooms, absolutely, in the, in the, in the meeting rooms. And uh, I remember with, with a small group of, of other colleagues, we, one of the requests was to, to start having Wi-Fi in some rooms. And it was a big, big issue to get it, very big, because, and here, here comes something which is, used and we use all the time because of security issues mm -hmm. you know when when uh, you want to be conservative in many cases first thing you put in front is but there is a security issue which is true there is a security issue but there is also a security solution to that all the time only that the security solution comes even uh, afterwards and this has been repeated all the time Uh, with the introduction of social media, of each social media. And uh, even now, nowadays, with online uh, meetings, which were forced uh, by the COVID situation, you know, one of the most important impediments was the security issue. 
So there's a continuity in using this. I'm not saying that that we should uh, underestimate uh, uh, all the, the the security requirements for for certain uh, activities. Uh, we should be more capable of understanding when and where there is a real security issue and when and where there is not. That's Just to add to Stefano on this, this is definitely in the continuity and the criteria for introduction of every new, to new tools. And what we found is that there is a lack of sec cyber security culture in many, not only ministries of foreign affairs, but uh, many institutions. And the usually discussion is binary. Uh, you come and say, okay, I have this new tool, I want to use it from my official computer. And the uh, security people said, no, it's not secure, you cannot use it. And this is almost like uh, uh, the issue that you don't debate, because who are you as a diplomat and official to challenge cybersecurity people and take the risk that maybe due to you, there will be a break. But uh, discussion on cybersecurity is becoming so essential. And as Stefano mentioned, it should be supported by cybersecurity culture by saying, OK, uh, first, we don't have a 100% secure technology. What is the risk that we are uh, ready to tolerate? And how we deal with this risk? That, uh, as far as we know, um, uh, doesn't exist in, uh, in many institutions. And the COVID crisis and arrival on online meeting platform uh, was in a way X-ray and showed so, so clearly lack of cybersecurity culture. One question I really would like to ask you is about the future of diplomacy. So I think we often, the only way we can understand the future is by looking to the past and the present. And on the one hand, you highlighted uh, continuity, you also highlighted change. And I think some of these discussions really have become heightened due to the COVID-19 crisis. But if you were to look 20 years ahead into the profession of diplomacy in relation to new technology and the internet, what what do you foresee? What is your, so to speak, prediction for the next 20 years? Let me let me start, and then Johan will uh, say, say its point of view. But I, I, I think um, the opinion that I've been, you know, developing uh, is that more and more diplomats will have to develop communication skills. This is not new. I mean, the communication skill is a traditional one. It's even in the you know uh, previous centuries, it was like that. But the, the 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 development you have in the kind of expectations vis-à-vis -vis, uh, the diplomatic activity and uh, or the, the 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 available uh, tools makes uh, uh, in, let's say um, not makes but um, implies that diplomats will have to be more skilled in terms of communication. And this is strictly related with the, with the IT uh, tools. You need the contents. I always take for granted that what you're going to communicate is something which is valuable. You know, it can be your country, it can be your economy, it can be your political position, it can be the assistance to the uh, your community. There is content. There is a good reason. There is some. I mean, the, the good you want to sell, it's a good one. You know. You, you, but in order to communicate all this, you will have to be more and more effective in the usage of the proper tools. That's that's why I go back to to the digital marketing we were saying before. Today, it's not only that you have a, a wide array of, of, uh, of tools, of uh, uh, instruments that you can use, but also behind every instrument, you have a different logic and you, and you have a different ways to be more effective. If you don't know about this, you will spend a lot of time for getting little results. Definitely on, on this point from Stefano, what is the, the key is to increase the culture and understanding of technology. 
Therefore, next time when somebody can say, uh, come with the latest AI tool, you ask at least reasonable question. This is extremely important. You may not know technology, but you basically ask, what is it for? Uh, how it can be used? Uh, what is the future of it? I think that diplomacy and diplomats have to go deeper in understanding it. Uh, blockchain is the best example of the hype, which was uh, received almost like ideology. And nobody questioned the, asked the practical issue. But on the future of diplomacy, I would say there is a good and bad, bad news in inverted commas. Let me start with the good news. For diplomats and diplomacy, we will need more diplomacy than in the past. And the reason is that the world is becoming interdependent through the technology, through unfortunately spread of viruses, through the economy and through other elements. Many conflicts in the world uh, have to be managed through negotiation and understanding the other side. Even if the one side is much more powerful and can drop the bombs, the bombs pro do not provide solution for the bites, bites, bits and bites. You destroy communication, but you destroy your supply chain, you destroy the, this interdependence element. Therefore, there will be need for much, much more diplomacy. Now, sort of bad news is that uh, it is not granted that diplomacy will be performed only by diplomats and the official uh, diplomatic machineries. Diplomacy will be, in a way, democratized, and there will be more communities needing diplomatic skills to represent their interests, local communities, movements, businesses, NGOs. Therefore, this is the interplay which we, we, we will uh, basically face. Uh, need for more diplomacy, but performing different way by, to some extent, different, uh, different people, uh, while keeping traditional diplomacy as a backbone, especially of the international system. Thank you, Stefano and Jovan, for these insightful reflections on the Internet Guide for Diplomats on the past 20 years, the present and the next 20 years. What are the next steps? You can consult the book, Internet Guide for Diplomats. You can follow the timeline and the things we have prepared for the 20th anniversary on our website.